dimensional. I want to say this. Everything, everything that happens in the physical was first in the spiritual. Things don't happen from the physical realm into the spiritual. But we need to understand that things happen from the spiritual and then manifest in the physical. Very important that we understand this because everything we see was first in the spiritual realm. From the spiritual, then the natural. First spiritual, somebody say first spiritual, first spiritual. then the natural. Yeah. Very, very important. Matter of fact, when we go to Matthew 1 and 20, let's go to Matthew 1 and 20. We love to go through the word, amen. Because our word is not going to stand, but the word of God will always stand. It will never go down. It will always stand up. Heaven and earth shall pass away. The word of God shall stand forever. Amen. Matthew 1 and 20 says, watch this. This is often spoken of as uh, the Christmas story or, or uh, you know, around the time when Jesus was born. You know, we know it was December 25th. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the important Amen. thing about us believers is that he was born. Amen? Amen. He was born. Now watch this. It says this. It says, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Now, this is an angel that's speaking to Joseph. Joseph, of course, was Jesus' daddy. He was his father. He wasn't his biological father, but he was his physical father. Watch this. I'm going somewhere with this. The thing is that he, he was a spouse or engaged to a young virgin. And a young virgin, we, we, nowadays we don't hear the word virgin too much, amen. We think of Virgin Mobile and Virgin Airlines and, you know, and Virgin Records. We don't think about the purity of what a virgin really is, amen. But I want to let everybody know, watch all over the world, that it's still good to be a virgin. Young people and even adults, it's good to be a virgin. Don't, don't feel ashamed because you're a virgin, amen. It's better to be a virgin than to be the other thing. So listen, you, you who are not born again, you can become born again and be a virgin again. How about that? We need to understand that God will allow us an opportunity to get it right. He'll give us a second chance. We serve the God of a second chance. Amen. Amen. But I want you to understand that this is a time during when uh, Joseph was a spouse or engaged to Mary. She's a young virgin and she's with child. And you got to understand at this time, he wants to know what is going on. You know, uh, you know, we, we ain't do no hanky-panky, you know, no ring, no thing. It even stood back then. But the thing is that at this time, the angel's coming to Joseph and he's speaking. And so we see this in, in uh, Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew uh, chapter 2 verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of who? The Holy Ghost. We taught in an earlier lesson that the Holy Ghost is not in it. Amen, somebody. Amen. Holy Ghost is not a football, it's not a frisbee. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost is God in spirit. Amen. Amen. Because a frisbee can't live inside. You can't even eat a frisbee. You can't even melt a frisbee. You can't melt a basketball and eat it. The Holy Ghost is God in spirit. And God wants to live on the inside of all of us. Amen. Amen. So let's Amen. stop saying we caught it or they caught it or the Holy Ghost, it fell and it. No, no. Holy Ghost is just like saying your mama's in it. You wouldn't like that. We say your mama was in it. Amen. Your daddy is in it. You, you know. No one is in it. Remember Adam's family cousin it had the long hair. A cousin it had no face and nothing. Cousin it's walking like, ee, ee, ee. cousin it. Everybody laughing cousin it. Well, the thing about Holy Ghost is holy. Holy Ghost is not cousin it. Holy Ghost is God in spirit. Can you say amen? All right. And so, so the angels talking to him. And, and verse twenty one says, "And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name what? Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Make it plain." Watch this. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin. Nigga, that word again. It's not a bad word. It's a good word. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name, what? Emmanuel. Good name. Which being interpreted is what? God with us. God with us. I tell you, everything that's in the spiritual realm will manifest in the physical. I'm going somewhere. So, with that being said, we understand that if Emmanuel means God with us, amen, God dwelling with us, God dwelling with man, we need to see a physical aspect of God in the earth realm. Amen? amen. Remember, God, God is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. When we look at Colossians 2 and 9, the Bible says that Jesus is the fullness. Somebody say fullness. Of the Godhead bodily. Bodily. There we go again. So that means God is in the physical realm. In the flesh. Hallelujah. Jesus is his name. And so what happens is we understand that there's a divine order how God does things. First in the spiritual, then in the natural. Now watch this. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's Colossians 2 and 9. 
Now, Jesus is the physical manifestation of the existence of God. If people say, you know, how, how can I touch God? How can I see God? Jesus walked the earth as God, but he didn't come in all his glory and to blow up the spot. He came as a humble shepherd. He came real humble and real meek. He didn't come to try to be a superstar. Even though the Bible said when he began to preach and teach the gospel of the kingdom that his fame spread abroad. We know that. That's because he was moving in the power of God and he was getting effects and he was getting results from his ministry. People will always come when they see signs, wonders, and miracles. People will start coming. They'll trickle in little here, little there. Today is a different day, but the God is the same. So we got to find out what is it that, that Jesus had and what is it that these men and women of God had that was so anointed and caused people to want to come to God and say, God, here I am. Mm -hmm. 